Hello and welcome to CS230. This is Lecture 8 and Lesson 2. And in this lesson, we're going to be working with JavaScript and JSON. We've already seen um, some JSON in the Thursday lecture, um, and we saw some complicated structures as well. But I wanted to go into it in a little bit more detail and have a look at how we might ultimately deal with JSON and file handling and then and, and become more proficient in manipulating JavaScript objects that are created from JSON strings. So that's a really important statement here. Um, and, and the examples we look at in this particular lesson will mostly be working through examples um, where, where we're swapping uh, between um, JSON strings to uh, JavaScript objects using json.parse and then moving the other way with json.stringify. Remember that um, json objects and arrays you'll hear me refer to these, they're not JavaScript objects in arrays, okay? They, they correspond to each other, and JSON encodings are always, always strings. It's important to remember this, okay? So sometimes then we'll see JSON structures like objects embedded in other JSON structures. So this is called nested JSON data, and this may be appropriate for whatever model you want to actually have. So if you take a very, very simple model for a book, um, and we just look at one, then we can actually um, generate a a JSON structure. So here's a JSON structure. We're, um, we're called declaring a variable, um, a JSON string variable here. Um, it's going to be a book, okay? And in this particular one, we're just going to record the details for the Fellowship of the Ring by Tolkien from 1954. It includes the characters Gandalf, Frodo, Baggins, and Galadriel, and others, of course. The genre is fantasy fiction, and we have a price point for this um, for paperbacks, hardcovers, and Kindle. And like, if you're going to pay, um, 20 euro for a 1954 edition of Village of the Ring, buy it. But anyhow, um, but really the model that we're using here might be different from the model we use in a library um, because they wouldn't be interested in the price as such. They might be interested in other aspects, uh, an ISBN number, a shelf number, or something like this. So, um, so we can create this string. And look, here we're going to use the back tick again to create a string in our application. The back tick opening and the backtick closing. And you'll notice that when I did it in class, the last time I had lots of backticks open and closed and used a concatenation operator to make it work. But we don't actually have to do that. Um, we can do it all in one line, one um, opener, one closer, and have separate lines. And it knows we're trying to create a JSON string. Okay, and unsurprisingly, we use the JSON to parse to convert from the JSON string to a JSON object. And then what we want to do is we want to iterate over we want to find all the values, you know, and all this, the structure of this. Because we might want to print it to a file, we might want to send it across and use it in um, in some dynamically generated table or something that we're using um, on the front end. So what we do is we create a, um, a, a function to do this. We're calling it printing the values, print values, and it takes as a parameter the, the JavaScript object. And then we use the for k in object approach in order to be able to do this. And what it does is it allows us to iterate over all the keys in an object and then access the object keys and um, the keyword k here using uh, object square back k so like an array of keys um, and we print out the value every time we come across a new key value pair unless that key the keys value is an object and if that's the case then we recursively call the function to be able to go over that again okay i notice that the key the k in object okay so the key in, and the value associated with the key also works with arrays. So, you know, this was a nested, uh, price was a nested object, characters was a nested um, array, but we can use this approach to iterate over the array as well. So where you're essentially having a, a key value of zero, one, two, etc. Okay, and we just print the values. And if we want to access a nested structure, then we use the object name indexed by the square brackets, going by this. And we've seen some dot notation as well for to be able to access this, but it allows us to navigate through the structure that's been created, okay? And then this iteratively goes over the structure, okay? So we can see that happening. I've, I've copied the, the, the code here in my editor, and we can go to this. And it's in Node.js, so you, demo one. And unsurprisingly, it works as we would have expected. Fletch of the Ring, Tolkien, the full details here. There's no indented nesting. We can actually, we can we can set it up so we can do that as well, of course. You know, but um, And then these are the three items that we specifically extracted by navigating the, the, um, the JSON object 
or the, you know, the JavaScript object manually. Okay, so that's um, that's nice. Now, I was looking at this. Well, we'll come back to that, that, that print language. You can say to yourself, is this the best way to do this? Or are there other ways to do it? So we can, we can come back to that in a minute, but let's first go back to our document. So we can execute as we've seen using Node.js, but we know that there are numerous ways to iterate over objects using, for example, the foreign method that we had up there. But there's also um, object.keys that allows us to get the keys directly. And there are object.entries, which is another way to actually iterate um, over objects. Um, and they, they both work in similar way to the for in loop. And they ignore the prototype chain. Okay, So when we iterate over objects, only the object's own innumerable properties are iterated. And you can read all about that stuff here if you want. Okay, In, in, in some summary, I suppose, innumerable simply means that they're countable. And with JavaScript objects, innumerable objects, or innumerable properties, sorry, are those which we're we are typically interested in when we're iterating over the properties of the element. So the designation is required because JavaScript objects, as you probably know, have many other properties like proto and constructor, and we don't want to include those when we iterate over it. So if you take a simple object, called that object is aligned, uh, first name John, last name Keating, then these are properties that we can actually look at. And we can check to see constructor, prototype, first name, last name. And so we can actually look and see, is this an enumerable um, property or not? And then, so when we iterate, we just get the ones that we're interested in. So basically, um, it's just worth knowing this. Okay, so let's get back to our, our interesting question. That, oh, well, it's interesting to me anyway. Okay where I would say, are there different ways to iterate over this list? So I, I, I had a look and I, I wrote this function, where called, instead of print values, it's called print more values. And for here, I'm generating a key value pair of object.entries. Okay, so that's kind of nice, okay? Um, and then I'm looking again, if the value is an object, recall the value. It should be, this one of course should be print more values, call yourself. And then, but we can call print values, it doesn't matter, okay, and do uh, a console.log of the key and value. So that's kind of nice, um, because, you know, we're actually assigning a variable to the entries for each. So for each entry, it goes along and iterates through this. We have this, So, but you know it's a for of, as opposed to uh, over here, um, we have for in, okay? So that was nice. That works too. Or alternatively, if you like your your uh, arrow functions, then we can actually create a function called print even more values. Let's actually fix that. Mm. Oh no, I have done that fix there. It's just this one here. I really should have called this print more values. So anyway, this one here. So here I'm looking essentially doing the uh, uh, getting the entries, and instead of having a for loop where I iterate over the key value pairs from object.entries here, here, I'm actually saying object.entries dot for each key value pair, and then I do my test. And I've min taken this, because if you use the fav arrow and you don't want to use chain brackets around it, okay, in this um, uh, anonymous function, then what happens is we would like to be able to reduce it down to a single line, and then we can use the ternary operation here to essentially replace the if then else, uh, the if else okay, situation here. So this is nice. I mean, this is quite nice. It's a lot more neat. You don't see an explicit for function in here, but um, it's a nice way to do it. So you can embed those in your program and try them out, and they work the same. I've checked them. Fine. And just finally, to finish, I did talk in, in class and tell you that um, you can use JSON in other languages as well, of course. It's common. The whole idea is that you should be able to process JSON regardless of, um, of the language. And you can use Java. It's a bit more complicated than Java. You have to install a Java library and a package, and then you know you install that and compile that jar file with your Java class. And when you compile your Java class, etc. But um, I'm not going to do that just now. At some point, I might show you again. But we look at Python as an example. So here's a very simple Python file. It imports JSON, creates a JSON string. It's unsurprisingly, you know, it's not, not like we've seen something like this before. And then we convert the JSON string to a, a 
a variable called the JSON dictionary. Okay, and the dictionary is a set of key value, a variable that has key value pairs. It's a bit like your object in JavaScript. And then we can print the dictionary. So, you know, I've got that file, I think, as well as a demo for you. Let me just see. Does that work? Yeah, here's demo one, the Python. Okay, and we can just go to our command line here. That's clear the screen now. And uh, Python. And we got heating, and that's what we expected because we were looking at the just trying to print out the surname. So we were navigating it in much the same way as we did the, um, the JSON object in our previous examples. Here, okay. So um, JSON works fine, you know, and we most things will work fine um, in other languages. Just before we finish, there's a final word on JSON that pars. Okay, so we've seen lots of examples around JSON.pars already, but actually if we look at the definition, we see there's something called JSON.pars, that includes some text, but it also has this optional parameter called reviver. So what's this reviver? Well, it allows us to prescribe how the value that was originally produced by the parsing is transformed before it's returned. So we see a lot of this kind of stuff going on with JavaScript. Um, it's all about transformation. Um, I think the basic idea here is that if we're going to iterate over something, we may as well provide some opportunity to perform some trans transformations at the same time. There's a nice example here in MDN again. So here we have, uh, we're just creating the, uh, the value straight away. Um, here's our JSON string, it's P5, okay? And we're using the parse here. And the reviver is actually an anonymous function that actually evaluates the number and um, multiplies it by two. <laughs> so actually, <laughs> When we create the JSON pars, we actually end up getting p colon 10 rather than p colon 5 that we started with. Okay, And we can do all sorts of fun stuff here with this as well. You, know, you can do all sorts of great fun. You can order, write things out to the screen and all this messy. But um, but it's nice. Anyway, but you can practice to have a look at that with JSON. Dust, um, um, with Node.js as well. I may have actually give you a file so you don't have to type anything. Yes, I do. Here it is. Okay, so the file is there, and we can we can run it. Let's run it before we finish up this lesson. Um, so it's um, node here two dot js, and yeah, it works as expected. Okay, but you can have a peek at that and and, and play with it yourself. Okay, so the summary then is we've gone a little bit more deeply into working with JSON and JavaScript, and we can also see we've seen that you can also use JSON with other programming languages, and we we, we will do that later in the course. Thank you for watching.